Good morning uh, to everyone. Today we are going to see uh, something uh, quite easy. In fact, we are going to see um, what we already did. So uh, Guy and uh, Node2Vec, but uh, with a different uh, aiming, let me say, because uh, instead of uh, have a look at node embedding, so instead of using uh, uh, Guy for uh, node embedding and node representation or, or graph representation, we are going to use it for link prediction. And then we are going to use node to vec for label prediction. So um, the table of context is the follow. Uh, we are going to start with problem and motivation, some really briefly about link prediction, and then uh, a short recap uh, of Guy uh, for link prediction and uh, what we have to change uh, in order to use Guy uh, for uh, predict uh, the existence of a link uh, or not. Then we are going to move to label prediction that is different from link prediction. And we are going to see uh, node 2 vec for uh, label prediction, uh, an example. OK, let's start. Uh, as usual, we are talking about graphs. And uh, often, we are in a situation in which uh, we have missing information and could be edges. So in uh, suppose you have a social network, and uh, we want to uh, know if there will be a connection among people, we could ask, um, we could have missing labels like, uh, I don't know, which color is uh, a specific uh, edge among uh, uh, nodes. And we could also have weights on graph that can say something about the number of people moving from one place to another or other different things. So uh, the task of link prediction is quite well known and easy. In fact, it consists of giving a graph G and two nodes, U and V. We want to predict if there is an edge between U and V. So why is it, is it important? Well, for recommendation system in which, for instance, if a person buy something, and something similar can be recommended to the, 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 cast, the, the user for privacy control on social network. So it's, I mean, control the privacy on social network, influence detection, routing network, and uh, I mean, you, and a lot of different tasks. OK, so it quite, it's, it's quite well known. How to solve it? There are a really lot of solutions to this problem, like uh, topologies-based method, node attributes-based uh, methods, uh, based on embedding, uh, probabilistic relationship models, and others. What we are going to do, we are going to use Guy for uh, predict the existence of a link. Just to recap, uh, guy graph autoencoders uh, taking input a graph with uh, the information on the nodes, so node features. Uh, we have one convolutional graph neural network that produce an embedding of the graph, actually of the nodes, by the way, and then we have this the uh, decoder and aiming to reconstruct the uh, input matrices, the input adiasynthesis matrices, as a, a inner product between uh, the latent variable Z. OK, so we already know it. Uh, what is the difference between the guy uh, for node embedding? The loss function. The only thing that change is the loss, loss function. In fact, uh, if we take uh, a look at the uh, reconstruction loss uh, we used uh, for Guy, uh, for yeah, yeah, node embedding with Guy, um, as you can see, they compute the binary cross entropy 
as a loss function among uh, the uh, positive and negative edges, okay? While in the guy for link prediction, we are using the binary cross entropy with logits, okay? What changes? Well, actually, uh, okay, the binary cross entropy is, uh, is calculated given, uh, I mean, uh, between X and Y, is just a strong pose of L1, L2, L3, and so on. And LN is this formula, that is the formula of uh, the binary cross entropy. And what changed with this uh, binary cross entropy with logits? Just change that instead of uh, use XN as it is, we use the sigmoid function. So a uh, sigmoid function uh, before apply the logarithm or before apply one minus sigmoid. And this one is the, the only thing that changes uh, between uh, guy for uh, link prediction and node embedding. Have a look just a really short example because it was quite easy. So it was quite easy. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this uh, first example. So as, as usual, I'm importing some libraries we are going to use. I'm also importing the uh, rock uh, score, rock out score from scikit-learn and some function from PyTorch Geometric. As usual, there is the code available uh, from the official website. I'm using uh, uh, as device the CPU because uh, last time that I tried, uh, I found some problem with CUDA due to the uh, size of the data set. Mm, so running uh, on the uh, GPU, on the CPU uh, gave me some problem due to the fact that I'm, I'm using a normal laptop. So. Okay, as usual, I'm downloading the, the data set, and uh, if I run it again, uh, the system recognizes that the data set is on the folder, in this specific folder here, and so it doesn't uh, download it again. Let's have a look at the data. Well, the data is uh, at this edge index, we have the test mask, train mask, and validation mask that are uh, Boolean values. Uh, I mean, integer, but zero or one, indicating if the node is in validation or in uh, or in train or, or in test. Then we have the feature of the node and the um, label, uh, sorry, the target of each node. Okay, we are not really interested of, of, on this information. So we are gonna use the, uh, first of all, we are gonna set the train mask, validation mask, test mask, and the data, it's, uh, and the Y equal to none, because we don't use it. And then we are gonna use this method called train test split edges that just produce uh, uh, a new, I mean, it's the same data set, but we have the test negative edges, test positive edges, and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. We can have a look at the, this simple uh, autoencoder. Okay. Remember that we, when we use the, uh, the guy for the lecture about guy, we used the model from uh, PyTorch Geometric. Instead, here we are re-implementing the guy, okay? And why we do this? Because uh, uh, here we can use our our own loss instead of uh, the reconstruction loss, okay? So uh, as usual, we have in this case uh, we have two um, convolution, the initialization of two uh, graph convolutional neural networks, okay? And as you can see, uh, we have the encoder just take the data as input and apply the convolution up to 128, uh, 28. And then we have the second convolution from 128 
to uh, 64, okay? So it's quite easy. What about the decode? The decode takes in input Z and the position of edge index and uh, the, the, sorry, the positive and the negative edge index. And it apply, uh, for, uh, by the way, this is just a tricky way, but uh, first apply a concatenation to concatenate positive and negative edges, and then it apply the product and then the summation. What does it mean? It means that is the dot product, okay? Just easy. Uh, and then return the logics. We also have this decode all, that is the method we are gonna use to uh, predict our link, okay? And what it does, is just takes in input the entire matrices and the multi apply the dot product, so Z dot product, Z transpose, and return only the one that are greater than zero. So, so they predict the, the edge list. So it's quite easy, the model. Again, we move the model and the data to the device that in our case is the CPU and we initialize the optimizer. We have here this function, get link labels, that takes in input the positive edge and the negative edges. And if we have a look at the code, what does it do? It just return an array of ones for positive edges, for the length of positive edges, and a number of zero, a sequence of zero, equal to the length of negative edges, okay? Easy. Okay, we have the training, so um, it's quite easy. So uh, we put the model in training phase, okay? We use this negative sampling uh, function from PyTorch to metric to op obtain negative edges index indices. We apply, uh, put the optimizer to zero grad. We compute the encode. So from our model, we encode the data and we decode the data using the, 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 the decoder and our Z, okay? Then what we have, we have this link logits. We compute the link labels using our function defined above this one here, and what we have, now we have the link logics and the link labels, and we here can compute the binary cross entropy with logics, okay? Among uh, these two values, okay? Loss backward, and finally, uh, the optimizer step. In the test, uh, what we did, uh, it's practically the same, instead of, uh, we set in evaluation, the model. Uh, these are uh, uh, the performance, uh, just, uh, by the way. And for validation and for the test, we pick the data and encode the data and use it for and decode Z with positive and negative inges, edges in uh, validation and test set. The, the test set. Uh, once we have done this, we just compute the rock accuracy score among uh, link labels and uh, 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 link uh, logits, uh, link probs. Okay. And finally, what we have, we have just to uh, execute it for, I don't know, a number of iteration. Uh, I used 101, and that's all. It, it, it was really uh, easy, so I didn't go too much into details because uh, it's easy. And uh, just to say, to say this, when we arrive at the end, to predict uh, our edges, we just have to, first of all, compute the embedding. 
and then use this decode all that is the function we defined here the ones that apply the um uh, the, the, the dot product among the entire z embedding and if we have a look at the final embedding uh sorry at the final uh, edge index we have that uh, as you can see uh, we also find some um, i mean some the the the, the, the self-loop but uh, we don't care it and here you can see that uh, this is the the the, the the kind of interaction we have. Okay, it was really easy. If you have any question, um, let me know. Otherwise, uh, uh, I'm going to present uh, link uh, uh, label prediction that is, I think, a little bit in more interesting. Do you have any question so far? I think it was very clear to me at least, so. Perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, so go on, we can go on. Uh, let me hide this. Okay, label prediction, again, the task is really known. So given a graph G and two nodes, U and V, we want to predict the label of the edges between U and V, okay? Uh, why it is important, why it is important, we can do something like human mobility forecast, for instance. Uh, suppose we have a graph representing cities and uh, link uh, represent uh, connection among cities. And we can study, uh, predict the, the, the number of people moving from one state to another, for instance or the type of relationship in uh, social networks, like, uh, I don't know, friends, uh, uh, family, or any kind of, uh, any type of relation in a social network. We can also do something like tra traffic congestion, like study where are the streets with uh, that in which there will be uh, more traffic and stuff like that. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you the code directly because uh, we use uh, node to vec Okay. Uh, it's here. Okay. Uh, what we are going to do, um, I don't want to spend time uh, uh, talking about uh, node to vec because Gabriele last time go really, really in details explaining how it works. So uh, what we are going to do, well, we are going to use node to vec as it is to compute node embedding. When we have did this, what we do, we just compute the edge embedding as the, the mean among two node embeddings. So suppose you have the embedding of U and the embedding of V, and we compute the mean among these two vectors, these two embeddings, and we consider it as the edge embedding. So as you can imagine, there is uh, uh, no training on the edges, but uh, we are gonna show that uh, we can still obtain interesting results only using this simple mean among uh, ed, uh, node embedding. When we ha have complete this node embedding, uh, we are gonna use the uh, random forest classifier to predict the label, easy, in tenfold cross-validation in order to have some stability, but by the way. So first step, for the first step, uh, we usually have always used data set like Cora, cheat set, and I'm quite bored about this data set. So I decided to use a different data set, in particular the IDS data set. If you uh, don't know, the IDS data set is a data set representing 2000 molecular compound and each molecular uh, is represented as a graph, okay? 
and um, in reality each graph each each molecular compound has a label saying uh, ex expressing if the molecular compound is uh, uh, active or inactive uh, against the HIV uh, virus okay uh, so this data set has as i said 2000 uh, molecules and just to play a little bit with this i'm gonna extract only one so have a look at the data set as you can see the data set has two classes so active and inactive there are 2000 molecules each molecule has 38 feature and each label i mean each node has 38 feature and each label has three feature perfect so uh what we want to do we want to use just one molecule for this really toy example so we for instance here i took the one the number the, the, the molecular in position number one and with this code i just took the edge index i transpose it and finally i move it from torch to numpy and i'm printing from 0 to 10 and this one is the edge index of the molecular the first 10 uh, edges of the molecules we can also access to the attributes in the same way so data one edge attributes to numpy as you can see uh, they are categorical okay but we will solve it don't worry then what i i did just to play i build a network x graph an empty one and i added the edge the edges found here and i also added the attribute as you can see the data set here uh, as uh, the node as the value uh, label the attribute label containing uh, this uh, categorical score so i also drawn the graph as you can see it looks like a uh, molecular I, I, I mean at least i'm not a biologist or stuff like that but by the way it, it looks very nice indeed so <laughs> thanks and uh, okay then what else have a look at the data uh, what we have we have the edge attributes the edge index the x uh, value okay and the y value okay now uh, as you can see this molecular is really really small i don't know we have uh, 12 uh, nodes it's really too small and uh, okay so i decided to took the uh, molecules in position 10 that is uh, uh, a little more uh, edges okay 77 no uh, nodes sorry by the way uh, what does this uh, this uh, data contain so uh, it contain contains edge attributes 166 edges each for each edge we have the categorical value and then we have the edge index uh, the node feature and the y feature just to show you, uh, to you that uh, oh sorry i run it again and uh, okay um just to show you uh that i'm not well i'm gonna show you later sorry first of all i'm setting the seed and i'm building manually because uh, we need the train mask the test mask and the validation mask and i'm gonna build it so first of all i'm using the seed just for uh, reproducibility i get the number of edges 
simply taking uh, the, the, the edge index to NumPy and, make, and then making the uh, NP unique in order to obtain the nodes. So here I have a list of 76 nodes. nodes. OK. Then I just build the, the uh, train size, test size, and validation size as the 70% of the data set, the 15 and the 15 for test and validation, respectively. And uh, here, just compute the sizes. OK. What's next? I, uh, I got from the nodes these elements. So I get the train set, the test test, and validation set. As you can see, uh, the train set has uh, 453 nodes. The test, the validation set, the test set has 11 nodes, and the validation test has uh, 12 uh, nodes. Okay, the summation is obviously equal to the length of nodes. And if we have a look, you can see that it's just a list containing edges. Easy. Finally, what I did from this representation, I built a, a train mask, test mask, evaluation mask. So uh, I added the element, I mean, I just put a one if the element is in the train mask. So for instance, the element two is in the train mask and you can see it here, okay? Easy. What's next? Uh, well, simply in order to show you that uh, I'm not cheating, let me say, I'm using X, edge attribute and Y equal to none. So if we have a look before, we have edge attributes, edge index, X and Y. I remove it. I added the train test and validation. And OK. And if we have a look now, what we have, we have the edge index, test, train, and validation mask. Perfect. So. And now, what we can do? Well, we can use the code copy and pasted from uh, the talk of Gabriele, really copy and paste it, run it. Uh, how many iterations I used? OK, 100. OK. So as you can see, the loss is quite high, but the graph is small. And let me say we just did this graph for a toy purpose. So it's not so good. But by the way, so we have our embedding equal to Z. Have a look at Z. Z is a tensor uh, with uh, one element for each node, remember? and uh, is an array of length uh, 128. So just to visualize the node embedding, what I did, I took the data set, I detached from, in the case, uh, well, if the data set, if the data are on CUDA, I have to detach it from CUDA, move to the GPU, GPU and then move it to NumPy, okay? And here I have our embedding in NumPy. I'm using a PCA to reduce the uh, dimension of the vector of the embedding up to two in order so that we can visualize it. Okay. And this is the our node embedding. It's really easy. Don't worry. Okay. What's what next? Well, we have to compute the edge embedding. OK, so in order to show you uh, that uh, I was not uh, cheating, I, uh, I removed some information from the data set. So here, I reload the data set in order to, uh, first of all, 
have a look at the attributes we were talking about. I'm loading the data set, the, the attributes, move to NumPy. I'm plotting the first three element, okay? And then what else? For each attribute, I compute the um, from categorical to numerical. What does it mean? The, pre, the, the, pre, the first element became zero. The second element became zero. The third element became one. And if there would be a one here, for instance, in the last position, it would be two, okay? So it's quite easy, moving from categorical to numerical. Easy. Then what's next? I'm compute this edge embedding as simple the mean between the node embedding of U and the node embedding of V. And what I have here, I have the edge embedding. Okay. We can also visualize it as we did before. So uh, I'm using again PCA, fit and transform, just to show you. And uh, it's really a bad plot, I know. But uh, remember that we did it just for a toy purpose. But as you can see, we have uh, our uh, node, uh, sorry, edge embedding in two dimension and we uh, compress it from 100 to 28 using PCA up to two using PCA. So definitely we have lost information and this is why this is, seems to be impossible to distinguish from between uh, red and blue uh, edges. But remember that we Strinked it uh, with uh, PCA. The last step uh, is uh, use random forest uh, with uh, tenfold cross validation to have some stability. And it's two line of code. So it's just import uh, cross -val validation score and the random forest classifier. I run it with a max depth of seven a random state of 10, and I repeat the cross-validation 10 times. So as you can see, the average of the uh, accuracy in tenfold cross-validation is 65. It's not good at all. I mean, it's not so good. But remember that I, I decided to use this data set uh, to play a little bit with uh, PyTorch Geometric. Okay, uh, I'm done. So um, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Okay, yeah, really, really good point. Thank you, Tobias. Uh, Tobias is asking, uh, why only two colors if there are three classes? Really good. I forgot to tell it, but uh, having a look at the um, edge attribute categorical, if we have a look here, uh, I don't know why. Well, probably because I pick this random molecular, compound moleculars randomly. And there is no element in the third column. So it's actually just binary classification. But it's it's really a, well, a lucky case, let me say. Because uh, uh, if we took other molecules, there could be a value here. But if I have to be honest, I don't neither, I mean, I don't even know what they mean because they come from biology and I have really no clue. Is it clear now? Perfect. Okay, uh, are there other questions? Yes, I have a question. So in the um, 
if I understood correctly, you use the PCA only for visualization, right? So you 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 still use the full 128 dimensional embedding at the end. Exactly. Yes. I mean here I'm you. Oh, sorry. Here I'm using uh, PCA to reduce the dimension, and I call it uh, edge embedding 2D. Today. Okay. And then when I compute the uh, random okay. forest, I'm yeah. using uh, edge embedding. So I think it would be nice or at some point to have a look if, or maybe you had a look and you have an idea on how the, the number, the embedding dimension has an effect on this. Yeah. So since you compute a PCA, we could have a look at the decay of, uh, of the singular value, so that's yeah. something like that. But yeah. You, do, did you try or? No, if I have to be honest, I used to, I was, uh, uh, let me say, in doubt if you use PCA to show the embedding, okay. but then it was just two lines of code, so I did, why not? But uh, it could be an idea, and I think could be also interesting to what happened if we produce the embedding instead of uh, in 128 dimension to make it bigger and then decrease it uh, using PCA and study the behavior or try to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. So use Node2Vec to, to build uh, a low dimension embedding and see what happened in terms, in terms of performance. Yeah. But, yeah, it would be nice to see if uh, we can get the same accuracy with four features, for example. That huh? would be a good new. Uh, I mean, it would be nice to see if uh, what is a so if we can get the same accuracy in the end, oh, well. just using a very a very low dimensional embedding, that means that uh, well. it's sufficient to capture the, the structure of the graph, right? So this task. Mm -hmm. so, well, yeah. we can easily try. So instead of use uh, embed one hundred twenty eight, we can use okay. embed two dimension. Uh, here I have um, edge embedding two dimension and see what happened. 66. Nice. Because okay. it's, very, it's much easier to train, right? We just have two two dimensions instead of. Yeah. It's yeah. a very easy problem. Okay, nice, nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's in really interesting. Yeah, I didn't thought it. We can also play with the parameters. 68 and always do that. By the way, well, it's it's really, I mean, thank you. thank you, you. I think here the drawback is the fact that I'm using only one molecular to do this simple task and it's a small molecular. So, but by the way, thank you for the question. Are there other questions? Okay, I think we can close here the tutorial and uh, hope to see, to see you next week. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Antonio. Bye. Bye-bye.